Hey guys, welcome to part two of the basic platformer controller series. Now before we get started, just go ahead and pop down to the description below and you will find a link to a GitHub repository. Uh, once you click into that link, you'll make sure that you have branch 1.02 selected and just hit the green button that says code and download the zip file. Once it's downloaded, just go ahead and open up the uh, zip file. And you want to copy this folder somewhere on your drive where you're not going to lose it. I've already set up a folder for this. And once you've done that, open the folder and just double click the project file. All right, now that that's opened up, just come over here into the file system and expand the scenes folder and open level.tscn. Once you've opened that, select the character from the scene hierarchy, and in the inspector, click on the script at the bottom and select new script. You wanna make sure that the language is set to C sharp, and the inheritance should be character body 2D. And for the template, make sure that you have object empty selected. We don't want to use these other two. We want empty so that we get a mostly blank file and we can start with a clean slate. And then I will just name this platformer controller. And once we create this, it should automatically open up in the IDE. Okay, perfect. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is make a region. I like to use regions to help organize my code. So I'll just make this region and call it process. And inside the process region, I'm going to have a public override void underscore physics process and it's going to take in a double called delta and inside here the first thing we need to do is make sure that we call move and slide and this is the method that we inherit from character body 2d and it's going to do most of the heavy lifting for us it's going to handle our collisions and it's going to handle slopes and things of that nature which tend to be a lot more difficult to implement in other engines uh, the next thing we're going to do is add another region, and I'll call this one gravity. And the first thing we need in here is going to be an export, and we use this export tag so that you can see it in the inspector through Godot so that you can modify this value without having to come back into the code. But this is going to be a private float which is called underscore gravity okay and now we're going to make a private void called apply gravity and this is just going to take in our reference vector 2 to the velocity and we'll just call that vel and it's also going to take in a float for our delta time. And another thing I like to do is just add a quick summary where I can give a description to this method so that I remember what my thought process was when I wrote it. If I come back to this a few weeks later, I may not remember what I was actually trying to do with this. So I'll just put in the summary by gravity to the character body velocity. Okay, perfect. Now we'll get a new region and we'll call this velocity. And in here, we're gonna need a couple more variables. So the first thing we need is a private vector two, and we'll just call it underscore velocity. And we will also need a private float for previous y 
or previous velocity y, rather. That'll look a little better. And another private float for new velocity y. And we're also going to need a few methods. The first one is going to be a private void called calculate velocity. And it's just going to take in a float for our delta time. And the second one is going to be a private void called calculate velocity y. And it's going to take in a reference vector 2. And we'll just call it vel again. And it's also going to take in a float for the delta time. So just to add some summaries up here, this method is actually going to calculate the bidirectional velocity and apply it to the character body. Uh, this isn't really relevant right now. But in the next video, when we start working with horizontal movement, we're going to be calling the methods for that in here as well. So the first thing we want to do is actually cache our velocity property that we're inheriting from character body 2D. So to do that, we're just going to say underscore velocity equals velocity with a capital V. Uh, the next thing we want to do is call this calculate velocity y method. And we will just pass in a reference to our cached velocity. And we will pass in delta. And then lastly, we just need to apply the modified velocity to the inherited property. Just like that. And in calculate velocity y, all we're going to do is call this apply gravity method. And we will pass in a reference to vel. And we'll also pass in our delta. And up here in the physics process, we will call our calculate velocity method and just pass that our delta. You'll see that this is underlined in red. That's because delta exists as a double in the context of this method. And we actually want it as a float. So we'll just typecast this as a float and the error will go away. Okay, so in the apply gravity method, first we want to check if the character is grounded. And the way Godot does that is by using a method called is on floor, like this. So if we want to implement that, I'll just say if is on floor return. And that will prevent this gravity being applied to the character while they're grounded. If we allow the gravity to be applied to the character while they're grounded, it will continue to accumulate. And if he's on the ground for an extended period of time and walks off an edge, he's going to fall at mock chicken. And we really don't want that. So this is how we're going to get around it. The next thing we need is to set the previous velocity y to our current velocity value. So that's just going to be our reference we're passing in, so vel dot y, simple as that. And then we need to calculate our new velocity y, which is going to be the Euler integration. And that will just be vel dot y plus underscore gravity times delta, just like that. And one more thing that we should do come up here and add an export variable and it's also going to be a private float called terminal velocity and what we're going to use this for is to clamp our fall speed because without this if we don't clamp the fall speed he will continue to accelerate the longer he's in the air and that's not really something we want we want him to fall at a maximum speed and then he shouldn't accelerate any faster than that. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to default this gravity to 800. And that should be good for that. So now we'll implement that clamp. So new velocity y equals mathf.clamp new velocity y. 
negative mathf dot inf for infinity and our terminal velocity. And then the last thing we need to do here is set vel dot y equal to the average of the previous and new velocities. And the way we're going to do that is just add them together. So previous velocity dot y, previous velocity y plus new velocity y, and then we'll just multiply that by 0.5. And the reason you multiply by 0.5 rather than dividing by 2, because mathematically it's the same operation, is that multiplication, addition, and subtraction are all very performant, and division is about 10 times slower than those other three operations. So any situation where you need to divide, you should always look for a way that you can achieve the same result through multiplication. And with that, I think that's going to work. So we'll just hop back into Godot and press play. And there we are. He falls with the force of gravity. He automatically stops and collides with the ground. So that's all working. And the, I'll show you why we use the export variables. If we look up here in the inspector, you can see that our gravity is exposed and our terminal velocity is exposed. So if we want to tweak those numbers because we're not happy with how fast he falls, then we can easily modify those right here. And that is going to wrap it up for the Verlet integration of gravity for this controller. Uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And always like and subscribe. It helps a lot. We'll see you guys on the next one.